Um, thank you very much. Um, about 2008, The Economist published a little supplement that went out with their magazine that started to introduce a concept of something called cloud computing. And they put this quote up as part of that. And seven years later, I'm still using this when I talk to organizations and individuals that want to explore what cloud can do. And the reason why I still use this, and, and if you like, the thing that I then add on to, you know, this is prescience, you know, but I will also say we don't yet appreciate quite how disruptive or transformative cloud computing is going to be for companies, for individuals, and for society. Now, I could ask how many of you are active users of cloud computing, but as I can't see you behind the lights, it doesn't really matter what the answer is. But I would suggest that all of you today use cloud on a daily, if not more frequent basis, whether you know it or not. But we are here today, and if we want to think forward, which is what this event is all about, and understand what cloud computing is going to do for us in the future, then we need to have a slightly different consumer of cloud services. This is Robin. Robin is my son. Um, this was taken when he was about six years old. He's nine now, so things have moved on a little bit. He's not quite as cute, you know. <laughs> and as you can see, Robin is embracing technology in the way that six-year-olds can, in that he has basically acquired my wife's iPad and is basically quite happily interacting with it, doing the things that he wants to do. I think this was some bizarre little sort of talking animal thing where you talk at it and it talks back to you in a funny voice. But Robin is the epitome of a consumer of cloud computing. He doesn't know this. He doesn't necessarily realize this. But the way that he interacts with technology and the way that he uses it, the way that he consumes it, and the things that he can do as a result, I think start to show us what the future is going to be like. So cloud is all about agility, the ability to get things done more quickly using cloud than you can do in traditional ways. It's all about financial flexibility and it's all about standardization. So let me talk about those in a little bit more detail. So I am a card-carrying Linux and open source fan. So guess who gets to provide technical support in an Apple household? Yeah, that's right, me. And that's a little bit of a challenge to me because I like, you know, you go into the source code, you see exactly how it works. With this thing, it's completely opaque. But Robin has grown up with this incredibly simple user interface. And, and let me illustrate this with, with an example. Um, because I'm not the Apple fan, I don't go out and buy the new stuff. It's probably sacrilege or something, but anyway, I don't. But I get the hand-me-downs. So, you know, the third generation or third out-of-date version of an iPod. So at one stage, we're coming back from a family holiday. I have my little iPod, the, one of the ones with the jog wheel. Do you remember that far back, the, the jog wheel thing? Yeah. And Robin, being Robin, is swiping the screen. Dad, it's broken, fixed it. And, and, and you sort of go, no, it doesn't work like that one. It's not like the iPad. You, you go round the little dial, and when you get to the one you want, you push the button in the middle. And the look of disdain from a you know, <laughs> six-year-old, you know, what idiot developed a user interface like that? Why can't I just touch it? <laughs> but the point of this story is, so Robin interacts with technology without thinking about and being concerned about how you do it. You just get on and do it. 
which is a very interesting approach. You know, and cloud is all about just getting on and doing it, not being constrained by the technology, not being constrained by the old way of doing things. Now, as I said, Robin's nine now, and it'll be a good you know, 10 plus years before he's going to hit the world of work. But you can just imagine the situation in 10, 11 years, whatever the time happens to be. You know, Robin will come up and will go, on my $500 iPad, and it will still cost $500 in 11 years' time, you know, I can get a new service, a new application in 10 seconds. What do you mean, Mr. IT manager or IT director, it's going to take you 10 weeks to deliver me a machine on which I can then spend another 10 weeks developing a new application? You know, where is the agility that I'm used to at home? You know, cloud, as I said, is about flexibility in terms of consumer pricing. Robin appreciates this. So Robin knows that when he goes to the CFO, a.k.a. mum and dad, and says, I want to buy this service and it's going to cost you 99p, chances are that the CFO will sign it off. Okay? His older brother hasn't quite cottoned on to this and comes up with, I want this £15 service, which needs to say doesn't get quite the same sort of traction. So Robin understands that you, know, you can start off with something which is free, and if you like it, great, you'll carry on using it. If you don't like it, you throw it away and go for something else. And cloud gives us that flexibility very often to try things out for free. If we like it, great, we use it. If we don't, we throw it away and get something else. That causes all sorts of problems for business, because businesses traditionally have never worked like that. The third aspect of cloud is all about standardization. Now, if Robin is playing with one of his friends or his brother, now his brother plays so nicely with one another, Robin wants exactly the same service. They both want the same version of Minecraft to interact with one another. They both want the same version of whatever other game they're playing so that they can play together. Again, we've grown up in a world whereby organizations have customized their applications, have customized their IT systems to the nth degree. That's one of the reasons why they take such a long time to deliver. But, you know, for Robin, I want the same as everyone else. I don't want something different because I want to be able to interact with other people. Now, as was introduced, you know, I started off doing. Push the button. And I started off working in IBM in 1986. On my first day, I had email address, email accounts. I could send emails backwards and forwards. But I was using a terminal connected to a mainframe. And I've been through all of these eras of IT to where we are now with cloud. One of the things that, for those people that have not grown up in this IT world, you know, I present this to clients and they go, yeah, yeah, we know this. You know. What I thought I would try and do for an audience that maybe not be quite so sort of familiar with these eras of IT is link this to something which maybe we're a bit more familiar with. And that's the idea of music. In the past, and I'm going back to the early days of the mainframe, you know, mainframes were so expensive that you didn't own them. You rented time on them. You know, when music first started out, it came to you over the wires, or over the wireless, I should say. And you didn't own the music. And then people said, you know, you know what, actually we might want to own some of this stuff. And then things like records and as technology develops, cassettes. Again, you know, some people are young enough here, or some people are old enough here to realize what cassettes are. For those of you that don't know what a cassette, little mobile music, really good idea at the time. <laughs> and then we had CDs and so on and so forth. And various technologies have come and gone along the way. But we've gone from a situation where at the beginning, you didn't own the asset, and then you own lots more of it. MP3, great, because I can now carry my music around. You know, if you take a cassette player, it may allow you to carry it around, but don't shake it. 
because it stops working or it makes really funny noises. MP3 stopped all that. And where we find ourselves today in the music world is that we find ourselves in this sort of streaming sense. I, I no longer want to own the asset. I don't need to buy the CD or I don't need to buy the movie or the DVD or whatever it happens to be. Video, videotapes, yeah. Um, I can just basically stream it over the network. And one of the things that we're starting to see, this sort of cyclical, you know, going from not owning it through owning it to not owning it, is very similar to what we see with IT. So we started out in the early days of the mainframe, you didn't own the mainframe then, you owned some stuff. And what we're now starting to see is organizations not wanting to own their IT anymore. They just want to consume it as a service. So what does that then make the future look like? I think it makes the future look very different from where we are today. Cloud gives us the opportunity, because we're not constrained by budgets, because we can try things out for free. I can get hold of huge amounts of computing power, huge amounts of storage at the click of a mouse. I can try ideas out at minimal cost and minimal risk which changes the way that business works. It opens up opportunities for people such as Robin in the future. And actually, it will be Robin that will be guiding companies and his generation that will be really starting to exploit where we ended up or where we're going to end up, in, in my particular view. This is all about thinking forward. And one of the things that we do in the IT industry is think forward, and we make fun of the things that we used to say. And, and what I'd like to leave you with are a couple of those forward-thinking thoughts that maybe are not so wrong as we might have thought about. You know, if all of the computing is somewhere else, if all of the storage is somewhere else, then why do I need a computer at home? Okay, it depends upon your view of what a computer actually is. But if we regard the iPad that Robin is using as basically a window, a terminal, into this cloud environment, then actually I don't have a computer at home because everything is coming over the cloud. And if you look at the way the marketplace is changing and growing, you know, maybe at some point in time there will only be five companies in, or five computers from five companies coming out of five different clouds. So what I would suggest is that actually, you know, this which maybe 10 years ago we laugh at is maybe actually better at predicting the future, better at thinking forward than where we might have thought it was. And with that, thank you very much.